You know, it's funny. Change is not difficult some days. I mean, you look at how much we all change in our lives and the experiences that we have going to new places, using new systems, meeting new people. I mean, we just we change all the time. And it's easy, and we don't think anything of it until we get to a place and we're stuck. And then all of a sudden, it's just like the hardest thing there is. Uh, there are a number of reasons that it's so hard when it's hard. One is, it's kind of unexpected for us. We're used to being good at change. And when we hit this wall, it's really frustrating. Uh, one reason is that when we have something that's difficult for us to change, um, let's say you have a sales team that's not being very proactive. And you know, you're on it and you're after them. And you're saying, okay, we got to do this. We got to do this. We got to do this. Let's try this. Let's try this. Let's try this. And somehow it's not working. And I mean, probably you're going to fire them. But it, let's say you don't and you, know, and you keep working at it. Um, six months later, a year later, they've now had a long experience of failure. And that long experience of failure creates a sense of hopelessness and frustration and doubt. And I mean, I know we've all experienced this. Or these times we say, I, I can't do it. And we're making that assessment based on the fact that we haven't been able to do it so far. And by the way, it's incredibly powerful just to add a little yet. I can't do it yet. Uh, I haven't been able to do it yet. So that's one big obstacle is this history of failure. So the first obstacle was usually it's easy. The second obstacle is a history of failure. Uh, the third obstacle is neurological. Uh, we have um, all these nerve cells and you know, so if you imagine here's a nerve cell, these are dendrites and we have in this other nerve cell and these are dendrites and these dendrites almost touch each other and those are called synapses. We have billions and billions of these synapses and we're literally rewiring our brains all the time and more synapses become dedicated, become formed, more dendrites kind of form and connect to associate certain ideas, thoughts, patterns, actions beliefs, attitudes, feelings, um, and, and create this system, this network, this pathway. Uh, it's like a little stream gets more water runs down and it becomes a, a river, more water runs down and it becomes the Mississippi. It's pretty hard to change. Uh, there are these millions and millions, billions of neurons dedicated to this way of responding. You've, you've formed this map, this neurological map of the way things are and the way things should be and what's comfortable for you. When you go to change, you, you've got to change, boom, 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 these millions of neural interconnections. So change is not something you just do. It's something you do and do and do and do and do and do. And as you are practicing the change and you're experiencing some success and you're, you're literally rewiring your brain, and you're, you're forming a new map. By the way, the old map is still there. And so as you get stressed, as you get reactive, as the pressure increases, you're likely to go back to that old map. And then you go, oh, I failed again. It's not working. So what I want you to hold on to is that change is a process. And that um, as you're going to successfully make change, it's about reintegrating, reemphasizing, redoing that process over and over and over. So... There's the, um, the, the difficulty because we're used to it being successful. There's the challenge of that sense of failure. And then there's this neurological reality that when we're changing, we're changing a lot of neurons. And when you're talking about a whole group of people changing, it's a lot of change that has to happen for this new way to really stick.